So you're thinking about moving to the Greenville area and fountain it is top of your list, but the jury's still out because you don't know where you're gonna live, you don't know where you're gonna eat, you don't know where you're gonna shop or any of those things, or is there anything fun to do? Well, in this video, I'm gonna touch on all of that for you to make this an easier decision. So let's go ahead and get into it. So if this is your first time to the channel and you wanna know everything there is about the Greenville area and places like we are today, Fountain Inn, South Carolina, then make sure you hit subscribe and tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to know about all the fun things about our area. I'm Tracy Roberts with the Atlas Home Team, and we help people just like you from all over the world relocate to our beautiful area. So if it's a month from now or a year from now, do not hesitate to reach out. All of our information is below, and we'd love to help you have a smooth transition to the upstate. So let's get into it. So where is Fountain Inn and how did it get its name? Let's go ahead and unpack that for you. Its location is amazing. So it's located in between Spartanburg County, Greenville, and Columbia. It has a central location for everything. So if you wanted to live here and go to work in Greenville, you can get there in 25 to 30 minutes. Spartanburg in roughly 30 to 35 minutes, depending on the direction you go. And then Columbia is about 45 minutes. So it gives you the small town feel and the quaint lifestyle of the rock and chair front porches. But trust me, it's not just about rock and chair front porches and quaint lifestyle here. There's a lot more to offer this beautiful city than just the downtown. There's lots of things on the outsides of the downtown for you to be able to do. And we'll unpack some of those, I promise. So where did it get its name? Travelers used to, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, travel here because of its springs that were fed from the Piedmont Springs that made a fountain. Remember back in the 1800s, there weren't any cars yet. In 1886 is when the first car was invented. So their horses had to have water, they had to have water. So when they were traveling from Columbia or Charleston to get to Asheville, this was a great stop for them. It had inns and it had the water, it had everything that they could possibly need. Now, our travelers also need it because you can come through Columbia to get, you have to pass through here to get there on 385. And if you're trying to go to Easley or if you want to go to maybe Atlanta, you don't have to go all the way into Greenville. You can take 185 toll road that's not too far from here, maybe about four or five miles on 385 to jump on that to bypass some of that traffic. So it's another area that if you lived here and you wanted to work in Easley, you still have an easy access to that as well. This is also a city that has an abundance of culture and you never forget that about every building that you see. So let's go ahead and unpack a couple other things. Remember I mentioned it's in Greenville County. It's also parts of two counties, Greenville County and Lawrence County. So what that gives you is the ability to not just use this area. Well, yes, you can get into Simpsonville if there's things that you need to do. You can also get into Lawrence, which Lawrence has a quaint downtown area too. It has a high-end restaurant, lots of culture, um, lots of different things to do. So let's go ahead and check out some more Fountain Inn. So what's it doing Fountain Inn? There are so many things that most people don't know about. Yeah, we know about the Swamp Rabbit Trail. No, it doesn't connect to Greenville yet, but there is a project to make that happen. The Swamp Rabbit Trail is great for biking and walking and just outdoor activities that you can do, right? I totally get that. Most people know about that. Most people know about the splash pad or the downtown area with the restaurants like we just went over. They don't think about Yonce Theater. Yonce Theater is a Broadway musical theater that also has local theater um, productions there as well. So it's great for that. There's also the Ellison Project. The Ellison uh, Flower Mill Project is now a revitalization to create it to be kind of like a Bridgeway Station or a Vaughn's. It has breweries, it has restaurants, it's gonna have shops, it's gonna have all of these wonderful things right on Ellison. Ellison is right here. It's, so that's what they say is gonna expand from downtown Fountain Inn to be that's the next place. So everything will wrap around that and that will be the area of growth. Speaking of growth, they hired, the city of um, Fountain Inn hired an architect from Columbia, Randy Wilson, who is phenomenal. He has made it to where they're upfitting all the buildings. They've created three grants totaling up to $34,000 for local businesses to use to keep the charm of the downtown while still giving them the money to upfit the buildings so everybody finds this aesthetically correct and pleasing when they come visit. There's places like ice cream shops to go to. There's the farmer's market. And then there's Cedar Falls Park. There's trails to the falls, covered picnic tables, a playground, lots of green space, and even a volleyball court. So when I say there's lots to do in Fountain Inn, I probably missed a few things, but I promise you, you're gonna love figuring all those things out for yourself if you move here. 
Many people are surprised about how much the Fountain Inn area has to offer, especially the downtown area. There's restaurants, there's boutiques, there's all kinds of fun things to do. We'll go into some of the fun things like festivals in a little bit, but let's talk about restaurants. The one behind me, Fair House, there are several locations in the upstate. We're so thankful that there is one in Fountain Inn. It is yummy food and it's definitely something you want to check out. There's the Growler House. The Growler House has multiple different types of beer that you can get on tap or you can even get them canned to take it home with you, which is pretty phenomenal. There's Sweet Catherine's. It is made to order food and it's Southern and it's tasty and it's all oh, it's so good, right? Then there's the ice cream place and there's all kinds of stuff like wings and nuts if you wanna have really great wings, obviously wings and nuts. Um, there's lots of different places you wanna check out. And we definitely can't forget Bobby's Barbecue. Bobby's Barbecue, while it isn't downtown Fountain Inn, it is phenomenal. It has various types of meat that they, they even make their sausage there. So they have jalapeno and cheese sausage. They have, we call them Flintstone um, ribs. They're ginormous. They're beef ribs, um, they have the normal ribs, they have wings, they have everything you could think of, even vegan options like jackfruit. So don't forget, and don't, for, oh, please don't, you cannot forget, don't just order the meat. The sides are made fresh daily, okay? You can have four different sides to choose from and they're so delectable. They're southern cuisine that your mouth just waters over. So you want Bobby's barbecue, I promise you that. And while there's lots of other restaurants outside of Fountain Inn, and there's a couple spottingly still here, I didn't mention. I wanna make sure that you know that there's other ones here. These are the ones that our family uses often. So there you have it, all the fun things in Fountain Inn, South Carolina. If you're thinking about making a move to the Greenville area and places like Fountain Inn, South Carolina, don't hesitate to reach out. All of my information is below. I'm Tracy Roberts of the Atlas Home Team, and if you wanna see videos just like this, don't forget to hit here and you can see more.